Hello there. Uh, warm welcome to you. Tuned into to Iron Africa. I'm Rochelle Ferguson Biahi. These are the top stories. Two weeks after being cleared of charges of crimes against humanity, Ivory Coast's former president, Long Bagbo, leaves jail with his co-defendant, Charles Blais Goudet. We cross live to uh, Frank Hersey. He's standing by in Abidjan with the very latest on that release. Following their arrest on Monday, two Cameroonian journalists from the bi-weekly newspaper Le Jour of Freed. We bring you details from that release from our correspondent Indira Nteng. She's in Nayunde. Also coming up in the programme, a report from Ouagadougou on a woman nicknamed Mama Africa who's been defying gender norms for decades as the only female trucker in West Africa. First to our top story, Ivory Coast ex-president Laurent Bagbo and his co-defendant Charles Blais Goudet have left prison this after judges at the International Criminal Court in The Hague ordered their conditional release. Well, it comes more than a fortnight after they were cleared on charges of crimes against humanity that erupted following Ivory Coast's 2010 presidential elections. Well, Bagbo's been in custody at the court since November 2011, while Blay Goode was jailed nearly five years ago. As you can see, there were scenes of joy from Bagbo's supporters outside The Hague this Friday. Well, to bring you more on uh, reactions coming out of Ivory Coast, let's cross live. Uh, France 24's Frank Hersey is standing by for us. Uh, Frank, how is the news of Bagbo and indeed uh, Charles Blay Goode's release going down where you are? Well, if anything, there's been a broadening of reactions here in Ivory Coast today. But first of all, no one's been all that surprised by this latest decision from the ICC because after weeks of manoeuvrings at the court, this is the outcome people were coming to expect. And if we go to one end of this range of reactions, we've got um, the victims, the victims of the violence of eight years ago. And here we're seeing something of a divergence because some are actually taking some comfort from the fact that there are strings attached to Bagbo's release, while others are clearly devastated. And there are already talks about them posing fresh demonstrations in the coming days. Then at the other end of that range, we've got the FPI, which is Bagbo's party. There, they're keeping their cards a little closer to their chest because they fear that there'll be restrictions and then waiting to see what they are. Because one of their concerns is that Bagbo, their former president, simply won't be able to talk about politics. And then looking at people more generally here, and bearing in mind that we're in the south of the country when, where there are many more Bagbo supporters, and there's a mix of frustration. Um, Bagbo's been acquitted, so why isn't he simply totally free? And there's also confusion at the complications of the proceedings and also the appeal. Also, many people tell us about a conspiracy theory that they have. They believe that France is behind all this, orchestrating the whole trial. And there's also a widely held sense that what we're seeing here is going to be more violence should Bagbo return. And then bearing in mind that this is all happening against a backdrop of rampant fake news. And then we have a sort of waiting game, ongoing tensions and potential demonstrations. All right, Frank Hersey, keeping us up to date from Abidjan. Thank you. We take you next to Cameroon, where journalists David Ngeye and uh, Theodore Chopper, who were arrested in Nayunde on uh, Monday, have now been released. Their release came a short time after the Minister of Communication announced plans to prosecute them for taking part in protests. Our correspondent Indira Nteng reports from Nayunde. David Eyenge and Theodore Chopa, both journalists working with bi-weekly newspaper Le Jour, were released early a Friday in the presence of journalists and journalists associations. Now, both men were arrested last Monday alongside the leader of the Cameroon Renaissance Movement Party, Maurice Camto, and his associates. They were taken to Yaoundé, where they were detained at a special police unit here in Yaoundé. Upon their release, they extended their gratitude to the media family and all those who fought for their release. I express my satisfaction and thank all those who have given me their support, directly or indirectly, for the identification of the place where we were detained and for the mobilization of the entire corporation. We want to thank you and all those who contributed in any way to our release, even if it's provisional, because the investigation is still ongoing. 
The release of the two journalists uh, comes hours after the Minister of Communication said on a foreign media that both will be tried for joining the CRM political party in protesting in uh, Douala. That was uh, last week, Monday. Meantime, uh, there has been an increasing clampdown on uh, journalists and uh, media outlets in Cameroon over the past few months. In other news on the continent, South African authorities say three students died and 23 others were injured after a walkway collapsed at a school just outside Johannesburg. It's not immediately clear what caused the collapse at Horse School Dryenhawk High School. The National Department of Education has extended their condolences to the families of the students killed. Police say an assessment of the building will be part of the inquiry. Have a listen. Uh, three were certified dead. About uh, 21 were taken to hospital. Uh, so far, amongst the ones who were taken to hospital, about nine were seriously injured. Uh, we have opened a case of inquest, uh, which we are going to investigate. And uh, we will be awaiting for the reports of the uh, engineers, and then which will form part of our investigation. My heart goes off the school and I hope they can go build the school up again and I hope everyone who's here must be fine. Now, in one of their biggest ever hauls in the fight against illegal wildlife trade, Ugandan officials say they've seized over three tonnes of elephant tusk and nearly half a tonne of pangolin scales. Authorities say they made the discovery after intercepting a shipment that came from neighbouring South Sudan. The total value of the haul is estimated to be about $3.5 million. France 24's Laurent Bersticker has details. The trucks were supposed to transport timber from the DRC via Sudan to Kampala. But agents at Uganda's Revenue Authority thought something was off. They decided to track the shipment to the capital, where they verified its contents with a mobile scanner, and their instincts were spot on. When we broke the seals and opened, we found that in one of the containers, we were able to find about 3.2 metric tons of ivory and 423 uh, kilograms of pangolin scales. The illegal contraband was worth an estimated $3.5 million. Each year, tens of thousands of African elephants are poached for their ivory, most of which is sold in Asia. And if China made ivory trade illegal last year, demand continues to be fueled by a thriving black market. Another victim of illegal poaching and contraband, the pangolin has in recent years become the world's most trafficked mammal. It's mostly sought after for its scales, which are believed to possess medicinal properties in some Asian cultures, despite being made of keratin, the same material found in human nails and hair. On Friday, Hong Kong Customs Authorities seized over eight tons of pangolin scales and two tons of ivory, a record haul. A recent study found the Chinese financial hub accounted for a fifth of all global ivory seizures and nearly half of all pangolins seized in the past decade. We head now to Ouagadougou in Burkina Faso, where one woman has defied gender norms for almost three decades now. As the only female trucker in West Africa, Mama Sata Sisi has uh, transported thousands of tons of goods across the region at the wheel of her truck. France 24's Kali Dusi and Bangale Touré went to meet her. The national road that links Lome to Ouagadougou stretches on for 950 kilometers. But it's not the first time Mama Africa has made the journey between the two capitals. Masata Sisi is 57 years old and has spent more than half her life on the road behind the wheel of her truck. She's West Africa's only female trucker. Thieves once attacked me near Sandieta. They even shot at the truck and wanted to take my money. I was very scared that day. It was my grandson that saved me. May he rest in peace. Masata works for a cement factory and hits the road two to three times a month. In an industry dominated by men, she's managed to carve a place for herself. Her boss is now keener than ever to recruit more women to take on trucker jobs. From the experiences that we've had with male drivers, we're thinking that if we had more women, maybe there would be more discipline, because women have the reputation of being more disciplined. 
After a week away, Maman Africa is reunited with her family. Her sister and daughter try not to worry when she's out on the road. People once came to tell us that our sister was killed on the road. People can be very mean, and her colleagues especially don't treat her well at all. I would like someone to help her because she's getting older. We're a family of drivers. Our father was a trucker. A family tradition Masata wants to see live on. I'm waiting for some help to buy one or two trucks and to teach boys and girls because I'd like to open a training school. I also want girls to have the same courage I had. A call to women across West Africa to join Maman Africa out on the open road. There you are, you're up to date. Your Iron Africa team is back in about 45 minutes time here on France 24. Up next though, Sanam Chantier is here with more international headlines. Stay tuned, you're watching France 24. Versailles, the Louvre, Mont Saint-Michel are well-known stars of French heritage. But French genius and France harbors many other hidden treasures. The arts, gastronomy, architecture, as well as nature's wonders. Come along with France 24. Discover France's living heritage. From young apprentices to accomplished craftsmen and farmers, to Michelin star sporting chefs, meet these people whose passion for their professions preserve and drive French heritage. You are here on France 24 and France24.com.